Today we're talking about the Cakewalk Pro Channel. So, the Cakewalk Pro Channel is really amazing, and it can take the place of so many different plugins. And in this tutorial, I'm going to show you what the Cakewalk Pro Channel is, I'm going to show you what it can be used for, and I'm going to let you guys hear what it sounds like on a piano track using four of my favorite modules within it. So, if you guys want to learn all about the Cakewalk Pro Channel, stick around after this introduction. Welcome everybody, I'm Dan Spencer and I am the Audio Sourcer. So this is the channel where I teach you how to perfect your audio recording, mixing and mastering skills. So before we get to the video, make sure you guys smash that like button, please subscribe and hit that notification bell to know when I have new videos coming out. So without further ado, today we are talking about the Pro Channel within Cakewalk by BandLab. So the Pro Channel is absolutely amazing. And the fact that it's built into Cakewalk, which is a free DAW, means you get it for absolutely free. You don't have to pay anything extra for this Pro Channel, which is mind blowing. So in this tutorial, what I wanna do is I wanna go over my favorite modules within the Pro Channel. I'm not going to go into detail over every module in here because there's quite a bit. So I wanna show you the ones that I think you would use in all of your mixes that will help you make them sound more professional, more analog, and just overall better. So that's what we're gonna do in this tutorial. But before we get to that, I wanna let you guys know that I have a link popping up in the top right corner now to my Cakewalk training playlist. So this list contains videos ranging from beginner to advanced. And if you guys want to get better at using Cakewalk, definitely check out that playlist after this video. So with that being said, let's get into this Cakewalk Pro Channel video. All right, so to actually enable the Pro Channel, you'll see you have your channel strip here. And this little section here where my mouse is at here is your pro channel. So you have an option to make it pre or post. I don't ever recommend making it post. So just don't ever enable this. This button right here turns on your pro channel. So let's turn it on. Now, if you wanna to get to your modules, just hit this little arrow right here. So anytime that you enable any of these modules, it's automatically gonna turn on this button right here. So just be aware of that. So that will enable it for you automatically. So this is what is in here by default, these couple modules. If you wanna add any modules to it, if you simply right click in this open area right here, you can go to insert module, and you have all these modules right here. So the bread verb two is a reverb. I don't recommend using reverb directly on track, so I would never use this. Bark of the dog is for adding somewhat of a thunderous low end to your sound. So I don't really use that one either, but it's in here if you want to. The CA2A, this actually models the LA2A compressor. This is fantastic. You will find yourself using this a lot. The console emulation bus. So this is console emulation for a bus. This is the console emulation for a channel, which we're gonna use on this one here because we're using a channel. This Panny, I can't pronounce it, so I'm not even gonna bother. <laughs> so this is actually for monitoring purposes. This allows you to test things out in mono, stereo, you can actually reverse the polarity, you can you know swap left and right, all that kind of stuff with it. Uh, the Rematrix Solo, I believe is also a reverb. Again, I don't use reverb directly on channels, so I don't really use this. The saturation knob from SoftTube here is fantastic. SoftTube makes really nice saturation sounds, so this is a good one you might use. The tape emulator, I use on every track and every bus, so here it is right here, and we're gonna use this in this tutorial. Now the FX chain, this gives you some presets that are built by Cakewalk for you to use on your channels per sound. I don't like to use this because I like to dial in my own stuff for the Pro Channel. I know you guys see me use presets on other plugins, but for the Pro Channel, I like to dial in my own stuff. But this is here if you want to use it. Now for the Style Dial FX, okay, you have quite a few in here. If you've ever seen the Waves One Knob series, this is basically what this is. So you have all these options over here and it tells you what each one does. So you're gonna have things in here that are like compressors. You're gonna have things in here that can add you saturation. Um, you just gotta read through these in here. I hardly ever use these, but if you ever are trying to maybe just get that extra 5% out of a sound and if any of these descriptions, you know, meet what you're trying to get Then maybe you want to try one of these knobs. We're not going to use it in this tutorial, but they're here if you ever want to try them out Okay, so that is the overview of all the modules the Pro Channel has to offer So we're going to start 
with the console emulation channel, and we're going to talk about that now. All right, so we got our console emulation here at the bottom. So you're actually supposed to put this first. Now, I wouldn't put it first if you're using tape emulation. I will put the tape emulation first and then put the second. So we are going to use tape emulation, but we're going to get to that one a little later. So all you need to do is just drag this up. So we're going to drag it to the top. Okay, so now it is the first module in our chain. And you have three different consoles to choose from here. So you have the S type, which is an SSL console. You have the N type, which is a Neve console. And then you have the A type, which is an API console. So you got three awesome consoles to pick from there. You got your VU meters here, which you can set to RMS or peak. You got your trim knob, which is going to be your input level. You got your console drive here. And then you got your tolerance button. So the tolerance button is actually kind of cool because what it does is it makes the console emulation act a little bit different per channel that it is enabled on, which is how a real console works. So I always like to leave this enabled. And the last thing we need to do to actually enable the console emulation is press the power button here. So now we have console emulation enabled. And what I want to do is I'm going to actually turn the drive all the way up. And this is just so you can maybe hear this a little bit better because the console emulation is a cumulative. So you're going to hear this better when we have this enabled on like, you know, 10, 20, 30 tracks as opposed to just this one piano track and playing it on. But with the drive turned all the way up, you might hear it just a little bit better. All right. So I'm going to kind of just switch back and forth between S type, N type and A type. So you can kind of hear what these do. All right. So let's give it a listen. Okay, so it's pretty subtle, and again, you would hear it a lot better if we had more tracks, but that is the console emulator. So let's move on to the tape emulator. All right, so to add our tape emulator module, let's right click here, go to insert module, go down to tape emulator. It's going to insert any new module you add at the very bottom. So let's drag it up to the top because we want to be our first one. Okay, so this is your tape emulator here. So you got VU meters also with RMS and peak. So for my tape emulation and also being our first module in our chain here, ideally you're gonna to wanna to hit around zero on here, all right? And in the module here, we have noise level. So I don't really like to use noise, but if you want some noise, some like hiss basically <laughs> in your uh, sound, you can turn this up. Uh, you have your record level, which is your input level and your PB level, which I believe stands for playback, is actually gonna be output. And you can link these two by hitting the little lock button here. So as you turn that up, it's gonna turn down the output level like that. So it's good to actually have those linked. And then for our tape speed, we have 15 IPS and 7.5 IPS. And then for bias, we have over normal. For bias, I recommend just leaving that on normal, all right? So let's uh, give it a listen and you can hear what the tape emulator sounds like. Okay, so that was the tape emulation there. And just playing around with it there, I like the 15 IPS for this piano better. It actually sounds a little bit brighter. The uh, 7.5 just sound a little bit more dull, which would actually be good for certain sounds, but I think for the piano, I think the 15 IPS sounds nice. All right, 
So let's move on to our next module, which is going to be the black compressor here, which is the PC76 U-Type. All right, so we got our PC76 U-Type compressor here. And this compressor models the black 1176 compressor. Now, I wish they had a blue version of this because I think that sounds the best on vocals. However, this will sound good on vocals based on pretty much anything you put it on, so no complaints here. Now, the way this compressor works is you turn up the input knob here to get gain reduction, and then you want to turn down the output knob to balance out the level. That's making sure that you have proper gain structure, okay? And then you can adjust your attack and release to your liking. And then you also have a dry wet knob for your mix knob, which is great. So you can really dial this in. And then you have your set ratios here. And then you have this one here, which is like super mode here, which turns into like a crazy, I guess you could say limiter at that point, all right? So for this particular tutorial here, we're actually just gonna use a preset. So all these modules do have presets. If you go to this little arrow right here, click on this. We're gonna go down to piano here, click on that. So it did a couple settings for us here and we'll dial it in a little bit better as we're playing it. So let's give it a listen and let's dial in the settings. cool so that second time i was playing it back through i was kind of going between bypass and enabling it but what you can hear and what this compressor is great for is bringing things forward that definitely brought the piano more forward and in your face so i really love this compressor for doing that all right so let's move on to our last module that we're going to talk about which is the eq All right, so we got the EQ here, which has four bands in it, and it also has four different types. So your hybrid is gonna be your most versatile type. Your pure is gonna be for mastering. It's the most transparent type. Your E-type models the E-type SSL console, and your G-type models the G-type SSL console, okay? Okay, so down here, here's our four bands. So you got your typical controls for your frequencies, you got your cues, and of course you got your levels. And then here you can do your high pass and low pass filter enables here. You can change your actual slopes. And then you can also decide whether you want to have a low shelf or have a bell at the bottom. And that goes for the high side of things too. And then you have this little gloss option here. And then what this does is it adds a smooth breath and presence to the high end without any harshness using a unique gloss filter, okay? So this is a pretty cool EQ and I really like to use it. Now, four bands, you know, that may not be enough in some situations, but remember, I guess you can count it as six because you do have a separate low pass and high pass filter down here. So, you know, it might be enough for you, okay? So what we're gonna do is we're going to actually test out a preset in here for piano. So let's go to the presets here. And let's actually do, let's do classical grand. Let's see what this looks like. And let's see what's actually being chose. So they chose the hybrid. And this is actually a pretty unique EQ right here. And that's my cat meowing in the background. And I'm just not even gonna bother editing it out. <laughs> All right, so let's actually hear what this sounds like. Let's give it a listen.
you know, it's actually pretty nice sounding. It's getting rid of some of the harshness up there in the upper mid. So I'm actually, I'm actually really digging that. So there you go. That is the pro channel with Cakewalk there. And those modules I showed you there, I think that we have four of them. Yeah, so we got the tape emulation. We have the console emulation. We got our uh, PC76 U-type compressor. And then we got the EQ. So if you use all four of those together on every channel, you're essentially creating a analog signal flow chain. And when I'm mixing in Pro Tools, I'm basically creating the same exact chain, but I'm using the Slate plugin. So if you guys are new and Cakewalk is your go-to, you know, DAW, or if, you know, Cakewalk is your go-to DAW in general, and you're not new to recording, you can just use this here. You don't need to buy any special plugins or anything. You have it right here in the Pro Channel, and it sounds great. And, you know, I love it. I think it sounds amazing. So... There you go, the Pro Channel by Cakewalk by BandLab. <laughs> so I hope you guys like this tutorial. And if you learned something, give this video a thumbs up. Please subscribe because I love making this content for you. And hit that notification bell to know I have new videos coming out. So that being said, until the next video, I will see you guys later and peace out.